And now, coming to you live from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, it's the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, only on KGRA Digital Broadcasting. On KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Sheena Metal. I'm a psychic medium. I'm an energetic healer. I'm an interfaith minister. I'm a 29 year talk radio host in Los Angeles and beyond. I'm a creative and a performing artist and a paranormal survivor. And I come to you live from my home in Southern California, which is on an Indian burial ground every Friday at three o'clock Pacific time. So if something flies by the screen, the answer is. Indian Burial Ground. This show is about spirituality. It's about creativity. It's about humanity. It's about passion. It's about service. It's really about becoming and then being your best and most beautiful you in this wonderful world and then inspiring others to do the same. And every week on the show, yes, it may be my show. It is the Sheena Metal experience after all, but it's always without a doubt your experience. Uh, my guests today are were some of, I think, my first friends in the paranormal community, and I adore them both so much. They are <clears throat> really everything. They're filmmakers, they're um, public speakers, they're musicians, um, they're paranormal enthusiasts, they're intuitives, uh, and, and you know, they really care about this community and about people. And um, I think that's so important that we're not just doing this for the thrill or because it's fun or because we want to investigate, or we want to get answers, but because we really care about both the living and the dead. And, and they certainly do. Uh, two of my favorite folks in the whole world, please welcome to the show, Christopher St. Booth and Philip Adrian Booth, the Booth brothers. It's so great to have you both here, my friends. How are you? Thank you. Hello. Beautiful, thank you. Lovely to see you. You too. I always get so happy when I see you. So when I watch one of your films and I've seen them all, um, I just smile every time I see you in them. I'm like, there they are, because there's a <laughs> there's a warmth that comes out of you both. And I think one of the things we've learned after, you know, 100 plus years of film and less of that of television is that you you can you can even though you're not technically live in person with somebody like theater or music you can feel that energy come through. And there's something about the two of you that just kind of warms my solar plexus up. And I think that that's probably a lot of why people love your films so much. They're not just great content, but it's the warmth that you both bring to that. Oh, thank you. That was sweet, yeah. It's probably the fuzzy, fuzzy jackets we wear. And and the, and the, you're, right, exactly, your warm and fuzzy jackets. That's yeah. it too. <laughs> it, it's funny you mention that because we just finished two really successful events, which was Scarefest, which was, oh my God, I think 25,000 people came to yeah. that one. And we just finished Michigan Paragon. And um, what you said, um, we have had a lot of comments about people seeing that in, in our shows and in and, and what we do. And I think um, what we have to remember at the end is a lot of people nowadays are doing it just for that 15 minutes of fame or trying to get famous in these right. shows. And right. they're kind of losing um, the focus of it all. I mean, the whole purpose of searching for the afterlife is to know there's something higher than just our daily existence. And when we forget that, it it it, it just becomes another commercial entity. And I think we still very much put that type of depth in, into our projects. And we're very blessed. I mean, what we have eleven shows streaming this I year. See them everywhere. I see them everywhere. Every time I turn on my Roku, you guys are somewhere else. Yeah, we, we got, that's... it was really exciting to have all um, the networks pick it up for the Halloween season because you know the popularity of The Exorcist Believer and with a title, The Exorcist Bar, which was the true story behind the original Exorcist. Um, for your listeners and viewers, there was an, diary written in 1949 the original one that william blatty got a hold of that he wrote the book and they made the movie from well we got that diary took a paranormal group to every place in that diary and investigated 
and then we created and told the story. We got to talk to the real priests that were still alive, that were involved, the family, um, uh, the people that moved the furniture, the people that tore the building out. And once you start doing these real documentaries, like type films that we do, um, it really opens up your eyes to what, you know, is really happened. So that has just soared because of the Exodus Believer and everything. I mean, I think we're charting number two now on Prime and wow. um, on Tubi and Apple Plus. We're on Apple TV Plus now. So we're really grateful. So we want to thank everybody for the support for that. So cool. Well, I think the fact that we've talked about this before because you've been on so many radio and TV shows with me. Um, the fact that you add... Um, that your dramatic reenactments are are really good drama. It's mm -hmm. not just like um, because sometimes with documentaries you're getting all the facts, but there's a moment where you're kind of like you're tuning the facts out, right? Because it's it's too many facts coming at you. It's a lot of talking heads. You guys split that up with um, you know, your your part where people are explaining is always very engaging, and then you do the reenactment parts, which are so visually beautiful. That yes. you sort of get sucked into it as if that the way that you would into a movie, into a dramatic film. So that there's a there's a mixture of things happening. And I think that people tend to take information in better that way than when it's just someone, you know what I mean? I think we also look for the story behind the story without even knowing we're looking for it. And sure. I think when we found out you go out and you've got a lead and you're going out to get the true story. And then you find out, oh, well, that happened, too, at that time. And that led to that. And then you do more research and investigation. You find out this is even scarier than the story you started with. And I mean, like, for instance, the exorcist, I mean, when the boy was possessed, he wrote on his sheets what the devil told him to do. I mean, who would have known that in the movie The Exorcist? But we show you his sheets. You know, right. stuff like stuff that nobody really knew. And I, I find that truly fascinating. Yeah, like, like, you know, because everybody in horror, especially the popularity of that's been a huge movie, The Exorcist Believer. And The Exorcist, of course, was re-released and everybody wanted to know. They always ask us the same questions. How true is the actual story right. of The Exorcist compared to the real story? And I think right. one of the really interesting parts that you never really get to know is that the in the movie she conjured up captain howdy which was on the ouija board in the in basement the right yeah but what the cool story is when what i love about doing these things is they actually did use a ouija board in the yeah. original case but they were actually trying to conjure Antilia up because she had hidden money inside the walls That's hysterical <laughs> so they yeah, wanted I was gonna to just... ask you that when we started talking about this i was going to ask you that do you believe that's what's ha what happened with the true exorcist story was that the young boy who was like puberty age at the time, right? Coming and of his age. aunt yeah. were, were, were playing with the Ouija board and they maybe, you know, didn't know what they were doing or didn't know how to protect themselves. Do you think that's how the demon came in? Well, that's one. I mean, that's what it doesn't say. That's why it happened in the diary. It does talk about how he, he played with the Ouija board because he was looking for money in a cookie jar that was hidden in the walls from Aunt Dilly. And of course, when you reach out, you really never know who you're talking. Do you open that door? You don't know how it's going to come. But right. at the same time, the Vatican, uh, the Vatican demonologist that we interview in the movies, he has his own point of view and his thoughts of, of why. And basically, if you know this, this real story of Ronald, which is the real exorcist boy, he went on after he was after he was possessed and he was exercised, he went on to become a NASA scientist and he actually did the trademark patterns of the heat shields that was made you be able to get through space without burning up. He designed wow. those. So the concept of um, one of the demonologists of the Vatican stated that God and the devil knew both. He was going to do something, something Over. great. And it was a battle. He wanted, you know, the devil tries to stop you when you're trying to do something for mankind as much as God saying, go for it. The devil's saying, I know the same thing and I'm going to put stuff in his path. I know it opens him. all these kind of things because if the devil would have won, would he have created a nuclear bomb? 
And if God won, which he did, he created something great that could, you know, further. It's the catch 22. I mean, imagine if that boy was, well, he was possessed, exercised, but it didn't work. And he went on to become a narcissist. Mm -hmm. What did he create? Mm -hmm. You see, it's a catch 22. And nobody really knows you know, the the truth of that situation, but the truth was he did levitate, he what he did speak foreign language, he had supernatural mm -hmm. power, he had all these things that he didn't have before. And in 1949, what are you getting influenced to? You know, like today the internet right. can drive right. crazy and puts all kinds of stuff in your head. Lots of movies to watch. But in 1949, they only had, you know, Betty Page, they had the A bomb. The A bomb right. was Betty Page. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, well, I mean, how he, you know, he was, very sexually, he was very sexually active, you see. So right. you see what I'm saying? What was he influenced by besides right. his home life or at school? And there was talk about him being actually homosexual as well. So, and there's one thing in the diary that always really sticks with me that everybody seems to brush under the rug, but it says that if that priest molests me one more time, I'm going to kill him. Right. So that's, you know, sort of a, you know, a very right. touchy subject, but that's what he says. And, and you know, for us, we kind of tell the truth. We don't make a judgment or bias. We when, just tell you yeah, how when, it is. You when, know? When, I don't think of ourselves as ghost hunters, so to speak, or that term, which I don't like that word, hunting more ex right. explorations I don't but, yeah yeah but i see ourselves as documentarians so we just record it and tell the best story we can and let the viewers decide i mean the ex the exes file the haunted boy is the name of the movie we're talking about and what's to yeah um but the thing about it is that's what they call them in 1949 the haunted boy Right. And I think that's fascinating. That was all over the news. It said the haunted boy, the haunted boy, the haunted boy. But, but, don't, but don't you think that all of those things that you mentioned, right, the alleged sexual abuse, the alleged maybe shame around homosexuality at that time, the um, the fact that he was a designer, a creator, which meant that he might have had uh, channeling skills, as oftentimes people who are creators channel from spirit. The, his age, the adolescence, um, all of those things, right, sort of leave uh, vulnerabilities in us that then dark energy can come through. Not just demon possession, but negative energy in general. I mean, it, you, can, you can get sucked into the darkness through weakness in you, and all of those things can cause um, a weakness. And think how, exactly, and think how scary it is. He what he was he wanted a lot of attention too. So there was, on the other hand, discussion that he made it up. But the point is, he did levitate. He did do this. He did do that. Yeah. You can't sure. make that stuff up. But what's really scary? Imagine if you pretend, which a lot of people have, pretend that they're possessed, mm -hmm. and they become possessed. Exactly from playing it. with yeah. fire you know yeah. and inviting it in so it's a scary situation i mean well, yeah i think i what i love about that show is we just got off the road promoting it because i have to tell you i we are blown away by the response for that movie it is just soaring on prime and apple That's tv so and, good i know and and it, it's a it's like we put so much effort two and a half years producing that movie and talking to everybody and things like when you get to talk to the people who moved the furniture, you know, the little eye in bed that he was exercised on, the seat in the pew that he sat in to do the exorcism, you know, the priest and the nun would never go back in to that room and they hired movers. And when you get to talk to the movers, just like we're talking to you, you can tell when people are lying and when they're saying, and, and to, to do an interview with him, he, he tells us, the cost of the furniture wasn't even worth the cost of the storage. But wow. they made sure that that bed and the furniture that was used in the exorcism was double vaulted, sealed with glass, double vaulted, and then put into a long-term storage facility. 
And that storage facility is Scott's Air Force Base, a military mm -hmm. compound. True wow. story. Half this stuff is horror filmmakers as well that we find out doing these shows are far scarier than the actual movies are. A absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And that has to make, you know, we do a lot of talk about how much the government knows about UFOs, right? Mm -hmm. But how much does the government also know about demons? And, oh, and good point. We good always point. think of that just being the Catholic Church. But maybe it's not just the Catholic Church. Maybe it's also governments are aware that there is darkness. We all we live in a world. universe that is half darkness and half light that is always trying to shift the balance in either direction. Right? World, world War II, look at the interest in the right. occult from, from, from yep. Nazi Germany. You yep. know, they, it's not fictitious rated right? the last arc. That was based on the true interest he had of the occult. Yes. And so it's quite, an, and that's just, this is 1949, this case happened. So you can see how close that was to that time. So I think it's very fascinating. And I, I, that's what I love about what we do is the amount of detail and depth. And, and it's, I think what's really, it's really cool. But I think once you've finished it and you look at it and go like, I survived because that story it has so much truth in it and the situation yeah. that happened really gets scary when you're really in the you know when we did the exorcism live for discovery channel where they exercised the house live on television and that was 10 years later after we had done the investigation the house got worse the oppression, the mm -hmm. darkness, the, you could feel it. I mean, uh, Sheena, I, I wish you were there when we did that. It, you would feel what is really going on. And the house mm -hmm. really needs to be demolished and to start again. A lot yeah. of people don't know that house is on a vortex. I'm Native sure. Native American oh, burial oh. grounds, okay? And all the trees grow crooked there. And when I put the camera down to do the, the film in the bedroom where they have the boy the bed rose up in the actual room where that happened you know we know there's a left bubble on the level uh you know on the tripod to keep the camera level and no sure. matter even though the level read straight you'd look through the camera and it would everything would be always off kilter and i think it's fascinating in the case that the boy who lived in maryland like the Exorcist movie, which it's a girl in Malin, but it's the word St. Louis appeared on his chest, not help me. And he was drawn to go to this house where his uncle, which mm -hmm. is Max, who Max von Sadow plays in the movie, Father Bowden, that's his uncle in the true story. Mm -hmm. Why would you take him to a house that's on a vortex on Native American burial grounds to exorcise them? So because it was 1949, you know, because people didn't think and didn't know and didn't know what they were doing. I mean, but it is a true story, though, right? That his aunt was dabbling in the occult, right? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, she was. And, and what happened is, is he was so violent and there was no place to put the boys. So the only hospital that would take him was Alexian Brothers Hospital. And they took, at that time, opium epidemics was going on. So it was violent, alcoholics, or crazy people. They were the only hospital that would actually accept him in it. And because his uncle lived in St. Louis, that's why it came on his chest. It said, you know, in the exorcist, it says, help me. Right. It actually says S.T. Lewis is and, he, and it was written so he could do it himself. So there was doubt because it was he faced he would have done it upside so down, they put mittens on his hand because he kept scratching himself. And it did say St. Louis. And so they took that as another sign to take him there and they put him in this house, which was his uncle's house. And that's where most of the possession really accelerated in the beginning right. of, of the course, exorcism of Martin, Yeah, That's where the demon wanted to go. Meet me in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Sounds like a song. <laughs> <laughs> but we're thinking that, right? I mean, that's, you know, when I interviewed uh, Christopher Quarantino, formerly Christopher Lutz, who grew up in the Amityville house, George Lutz was doing the same thing. He was dabbling in the occult. Chris said the guy from the uh, Long Island Occult Society came over all the time. 
you know, if, if you're getting nothing from watching the show, it's that if you don't know how to protect yourself, mm -hmm. don't be dabbling in things that you don't know what you're doing. Because there are things out there. I always say that um, playing with a Ouija board and not knowing what you're doing is like taking all your clothes off and walking into a bar at 2 a.m. and saying, who wants to have sex with me? Like, you're <laughs> going to have takers, but is it really who you want? And yeah. that's yeah, kind I mean, of what yeah. it's like. I mean, you're basically yeah. saying, is there yeah. anybody here that wants to talk to me? I mean, that's a pretty blanket statement. It's like, y'all come, y'all come. That's, that's, if you don't know how to protect yourself from the dark energies that can come through, don't do that. And people are messing with the black candles and trying to say their own, you know, negative, you know, spells. And it's like, look, if you don't know how to do this stuff, don't do it. Find someone who knows how to do it or learn how to protect yourself. But it seems like in a lot of these famous cases, right, this is how we get ourselves into this. Yeah, I mean, you can actually do that. I mean, you know, when you're at a convention or, I mean, anywhere really, and you meet somebody that you have this gut intuition that there's something that drains you off, and that's the same type. Of, I mean, those dark people can come into your life and then start controlling you. With it. Sometimes you yes. fall in love with them, and you find out, you know, your life goes mad. And that's why you also need to do that in your own personal life. Be careful who you talk to and share your life with and your love and your information. Because yeah. there's so many, I mean, there's yeah. so many dogs. We brought a, Chris brought up a good point on our, on our last speaking engagement. And it was about basically um, being too obsessed with the darkness and paranormal and not understanding the purpose of it all. If somebody has an afterlife experience, they see an entity, you can't immediately, for sensationalism, which networks like to do, immediately claim it's demonic or evil entities because you could be calling a a little child a demon but the thing about it is there's so much focus on that in today's shows that it's about searching evil stuff instead of just understanding what's there is what's there but be careful what you look for because first of all someone from the afterlife isn't going to speak to somebody necessarily that's got no hope. They're not looking for somebody right. who's hopeless to help them cross over the light. The people that are, the entities that are looking for people with no hope are looking for empty vessels. Yes. You know, that's the whole point. Yes. You know, if you, like I mentioned this, John Carpenter's movie, Prince of Darkness with Alice Cooper, that one with, um, was such an amazing thing. Where did the devil first choose to go? All the homeless people because they'd given up hope so when you're going and doing these paranormal investigations or ouija boards all this other stuff if you're empty inside right. get ready yes. to be filled, get ready to be filled up by something you might not want <laughs> exactly so, right never do it when you're sick never do it when you're weak never do it when you're grieving never do it when you're in a bad place it's just not smart you know mm -hmm. and because that's the time that you're open for influence you know yeah. and it doesn't matter whether you want to whether you believe in god and the devil or good and evil i mean you the the way that i look at it is i don't necessarily believe in god and the devil but i do think it's more than a coincidence that the word good is god with two o's and the word evil has a d in front of it which makes it devil so there's good and evil so whatever you choose to believe in most of the stuff is all based on negative energy and negative energy can be stored in anything like it's fascinating because we in a lot of our interviews there was a lot of uh especially young teenagers that say they don't believe in god but they believe in the devil and i'm going well you got to believe in both because <laughs> you know yeah, like i yeah. could i said in a, uh in a speak is like i'm a if i said i'm afraid to believe in god that's because I would have to believe in the devil. Yeah. And that's a horrible thing, but you can't have one without the other. They work off each other. Well, and don't you think sometimes the lie that the devil tells is like, I'm the fun God. I remember once when I was working on the Howard Stern station, we did a, um, we had a guest who had written a book on Satanism. And the chapter about God was called the God of the assholes. 
And it, I, and it was, I hope I can say that on KGRA. I guess I just did. <laughs> and it was all basically about how, you know, isn't God a bummer? Because, and they brought up, you know, everything from puritanical evangelical religion, which we know that's not God. That's religion like that is made by man. Yes. But the idea was, boy, if you really want to have a miserable life, follow God. But but Satan's the way to go because Satan's fun. And I think that's sort of the lie sometimes that darkness tells people. Yeah, they also, I remember they used to have the, because you know when the Christian channel had the right to put their TV, their TV ads on television, right? So, well, then so did the Church of Satan. And it was funny because like, are you tired of God? Right. Come to the good, come to the dark, ugly side. Exactly. You know, and you're like, this is really real. And because... You know, they always put good as handsome and evil as ugly, even though, especially after being married four times, you realize that not everything that is evil is ugly. Because <laughs> you get tempted by something pretty and then you find out it's really not good. Yeah, I think on what would... <laughs> Yeah, is a good. Like that's a really good like analogy, it. actually. I like how you just liken Satan to your marriages. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. No comment. I think another good example of that is with our show, The Attached. I think we we had spoke with you last time about that. Film. Yeah, I love and that. That's on Prime yes, and one of my Tubi. favorites of yours. Thank you, Prime, Tubi, and Apple. Did Plus. you hear? Did you did you hear what happened to the Exorcism box we had? No. No, well, and we the had, diary. Actually. We had the we had the, or we have or we had the original Annalise McKell, which is a real Emily Rose exorcism box. I remember I that. Yeah, it was. I beautiful. think I had it for what maybe seven years. Exorcism. And the yeah. Exorcist diary, a copy we had. There was six copies. We had number six since we did the six out of six. Yes, yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. Since we did <laughs> the uh, Exorcist file back in 2008. So it was time to let go. So Zach Bagans has it in his haunted museum. Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. Do you think, do you think all that stuff affects him? I mean, Who? do you think I mean, anybody, I mean, anybody that would be around that much stuff, but you know, well, like, I think not... he, he wanted it because, um, I, we, I talked to hours with him and he was really, really nice. And we tried to say, well, you know, this is a, you know, what are we going to do with this very heroic dark item? It belongs in a museum. It belongs yes. to a museum so that it's historic. Other people can feel it and feel the energy and see it and decide on themselves. I mean, our choices were a private collector who put in his basement. Yeah. Or, I, or it should go into a place where you can actually go see this real diary. He, and actually, I'll, I'll I'll use that to spearhead in the point of the story here. Annalise McKell, if you want a summation, you want bullet points, you want exorcism or d possession for dummies, this is it. Right. Annalise McKell chose to die just like Jesus did on the cross in her belief system. She chose to take the devil with her so she could prove that the devil... The evil exists so people could believe in something. It's exactly what basically Christ did on the cross. Sure. That was a true story. She, you know, I, I'd never seen the movie, which is crazy. I, 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 I think I told you this. I watched this, Exorcism of Memory Rose, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I was actually pleasantly happy how accurate some of the story was. You it's know how they always have to actually... Yeah, how they have to ask the demon the name before they put, you know, they exercise them. Well, they go, what's your name, demon? <laughs> Sounds so corny. What's your name, demon? And she goes, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. And I went, that's so cool. Because historically, accurately, she was possessed by six demons. There was Nero. There was Cain of, of, of Abel and Cain in the Bible. And the most shocking one was Adolf Hitler. Mm. And if you listen to the recordings in our show, The Attacks, we have 200 recordings we had to go through. It's funny because somebody wrote, we have uh, some clips up on our YouTube channel, Spook TV, um, and somebody wrote, oh, so these guys are demons now? And I'm going like, anybody that does such horrific things to so many human beings is definitely a demon. Is the meaning of the devil. 
you know, it's so funny that you say that because when people say things to me, um, like, you know, clients asking questions like, oh, well, when Hitler died, he got punished, right? Mm -hmm. And I always say, how do you know Hitler wasn't waiting on the other side? Because, you know, I believe where we go and where somebody like Hitler went is two different places. Mm -hmm. So wherever Hitler went, he might have walked through a tunnel that was black instead of white. And there might have been somebody at the other end waiting with a cupcake like, good job. Because <laughs> their good yeah. is our bad and their bad is our good, right? No, so, that's actually a really good point. That, like if you're bad, you go to your heaven, which is hell. And, and that's a really good point because hell is not... Hell is hell is heaven to these people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. As filmmakers, documentarians, or people, whatever you do, if you're blessed enough with a medium to be able to put your stuff out expressive, you better think what kind of influence it has on people. Yes. You can't cancel yes. culture out cases like the Exodus file or Annalise McKell. They tried so hard to do that when she died. Yes. They tried to burn her house down. They yes. desecrated her grave. They called her a witch. It was only when, which we got the footage of the exhuming her body, if you remember the show, and when they opened the coffin up to change the casket out, she hadn't rotted. And that's indicative of becoming a saint. But the bottom line is there is now a monument to Annalise McKell, a Saint Annalise McKell. Now, if you want to go around, did they did they officially saint her? I mean, is she officially a saint? Well, the priest, did, yeah. Well, I mean, in Germany, they did. I'm yeah, not sure. As okay, far as the... I get confused about that because there's a lot of saints from a lot of countries, and I yeah, don't it's know a German saint. Official. Yeah, it's a German saint in Germany. Yeah, it's Germany. Lucenberg yeah. or something. Good. I think it's called. But the thing is, it's really important that these stories are told fully. That you just don't edit them like, oh, she's a monster and it. I think, you know, it's like, you know, when we had done the Back to the Exorcist file, we had brought in a parapsychologist and a psychiatrist. And my whole concept was to put the devil on the couch and do a psychiatric test with him. Nice. Which you could imagine, say, hello, how are you today? Yes, you know, exactly. and, like, yes. and he's going to go like, so why are you, why do you think, or why are you so evil, Mr. Devil? Or <laughs> why are you so pornographic, Mr. Devil? And then he found out he wasn't talking to the devil. He was talking to man, a man. Yeah. Because there's nothing more evil than man. And we can see that going on today. Terrible stuff they do. And so, you know, did the devil possess hummus? What they did over there did some horrific stuff. I'm not, not yeah. talking about religion. I'm talking about terroristic people that just... You know, in the name of God, they'll do whatever. Well, that was a crusade, yeah. which is not my <laughs> God. And you can, ha I believe in every God, but not my God that will rape and kill and, you know, mutilate people like that. And, and I think that that is truly the Bible is man made, and so is a horrific events is man made, and they can use the devil possibly as inspiration but i'm not even sure if the devil really is as bad as man is and he's just sitting back you do my job i'm just going to kick back i always man. think of, of organized religion as like a fan club for god yeah you know what i mean if you yeah if you um if just because you say taylor swift said something doesn't mean she said it but in the fan club, everybody's spreading it around like it's true. Well, and I it's think like that's the what... Amazon. <laughs> it's Amazon of God because they make all the money. God doesn't make the money, but Amazon right. does, you know, right. and they serve it out to people and they sell it to people. And they deliver it to people on your doorstep. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I do. And the whole idea that you have to toe the line and believe in this or you can't be part of the group. Uh, that is not spirit doesn't care about any of that about you being part of a group or you agreeing with everybody else. Those are all man made concepts. And, well, I think um, the whole the whole thing is a scare tactic. Like if you're real, if you aren't good or you you know the the Ten Commandments, you end up in this dark hellish place that's burning full of fire yes. to scare the hell out of you to be good. That's not necessarily a bad thing in it's focused that there needs to be some higher source that tells you that you do need to be good because 
mankind sure could learn from that right now. They just don't seem to be listening. <laughs> but yes. the thing about yes. it is everybody has a choice in them, whether they want to be good or bad. And at some point in their life, they choose that path. And of course, when they're open to influence, whether it's drugs, alcohol, or um, things that happen to them in the way they're growing up. That's how karma is controlled. I mean, you make your own karma, you do something terrible, it's going to come back. It just yeah. is. But I don't need, you know, I don't need like a thread over my head that tells me if you don't act like this, you're going to go to a fiery place. I think good people have heart. They have true, they know how they feel other people suffering. And, and that kind of thing, when you, especially to bring that in the paranormal world, there's not enough of that because it's all become superficial industry. And it's really hard to get the messages across because there's mixed things about, remember when they changed the Holy Ghost from the Bible to the word Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. means spirit is in general and the ghost was too uh, stereotyped yeah, as coming really back sense. and resurrecting. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all very fascinating stuff, I think, but the bottom line is um, we all need to believe into something bigger than ourselves because it's not, the world is not just revolving around our world. There's something right. bigger Thank that you. affects you, your viewers. Really, us. really the punchline is you have to believe that you or me because I, when I feel pain myself, you know what it feels like. So if you treat everybody like it's yourself, you're not gonna you're not gonna hurt somebody you're not gonna know how it feels like you would never want to We're do that this one person so you i want you to be happy i want to be happy and i want you to be happy it's such a lack of empathy in the world today it and is. it's grief it's very grief. and i think there's many 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 good people many many good people. i do too i do too but, i believe that too yeah do you think there are ever um do you think there are souls that don't make that choice? Because I feel like, you know, we talk about special souls coming here like a Gandhi or, uh, you know, to do this good work, right? Christ, John the Baptist. Do you think that the darkness sends them as well, that there are souls that just maybe come from the other place? There has to be because if somebody sends out something good, you have to believe someone sends out something bad because it's hot and cold, wet and dry. It, there's your whole answer to everything is balanced. I think when, when something goes wrong, it's off balance. I think we're magnets, you know. That's why when you understand the paranormal, if you have that darkness in you or whatever, it sees that focus of your life and you draw that without getting into the um you know the woo woo spiritual stuff you're still a magnet so if you are negative and dark and you, and you focus on dark stuff you draw that to you there's nothing wrong with having a balance you know understanding that balance between dark and light we all have dark and light and sometimes the dark stuff makes us stronger it makes us um stand up for ourselves so it's a balance but somehow that yeah, I mean, you, know, you can't have light without darkness you wouldn't know what it was i mean why is there exactly. sun exactly. why is there day and why is there night why is there not right. so like there's a good and so, it's all the same you know thing. any on any question anybody wants to ask just figure it out am i balanced because you have to have both exactly well and this this planet right earth and other planets like it probably they're teaching planets they're where you come to learn and if everything was light and there was no darkness and everything was good and there was no disease or famine and it was the sun always shined and there was no nights how would you learn i mean we're here to learn right so we have to be in a place where there's a certain amount of struggle and pushback in order for us to learn for the soul growth and I'm all good with that. The learning and the and the obstacles overcoming and the lessons. I'm all good with that. But sometimes the darkness gets to be a bit much. And I know there's nothing we can do about it because as as there is God, there is the devil, right? As there is light, there well, is That's why you need paid vacations. <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise what happens is you do so much good and you're doing so well and you're making so much money. 
but you're so burned out and you keep going to the point that you hate what you love instead right. of being able to take a moment to balance yourself. And like say, for instance, say my, this weekend, my son's coming over. I need to spend the whole weekend just with him and not do any work. And then yeah. you're fine, but when you go back to work next week, you're refreshed and happy. So it's just important to take a break, you know, like I like Phil was saying earlier, but in the paranormal, so many people are overwhelmed and, and focused on the dead. They're not even living anymore. Right. Yes. And the paranormal yes. wants to talk to living. They don't want to talk to dead. Yes. Yes. And that's, where, that's where they're at. They, they're like, hey, you know, like, oh, you got that job and then you're interested. I would like to have that job because it sounds sexier or, or you know, more successful. Well, I'm living, so they want to be living or they want yes. to move on. And yes. have, have you ever noticed the amount of people that get sick, like terrible life-threatening illnesses that are in paranormal? So and, many. I mean, yes. truly. And so I think it's, I mean, the things... People ask this all the time. We've been doing this for 20 odd years and the stuff we've seen, you can't deny that it exists. Right. But if okay. you use that to understand how grateful you are to be alive and how grateful you are to be able to help somebody that's suffering, whether it's in life or the afterlife, then that's a good mission from it all. But the people that absorb themselves so much into the, the darkness and going into these places and and storing, God, so many people are getting sick. You know, oh, it's, and they go, it's the mold and the building. Well, I'm not going to say that it doesn't have some effect on you, but I'm going to tell you something. There is a high amount of people that have health problems that are paranormal investigators. I mean, really do, you know. So maybe they're taking a little more they can chew, you know? Yeah, I, and I think you need to have some levity. You need to have light to balance it out. Mm -hmm. um, it can't always be about negative, 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 negative. Yeah, but um, what show, Sheena, do you see on television that's to do with paranormal that talks about light? Oh, yeah, you know, very rarely. I'm hoping we're going to get more of that. I mean, reality shows, no. It's all about... It's all about the darkness from the beginning to the end and watching people suffering and um, the person who owns the house or works at the location or whatever it is, suffering, suffering, suffering and crying. And um, yeah, I think we need to we need to find something that balances that out for sure. Yeah. Um, we need to find that balance. That's it's so important. And I just think that we. We as humans, I think as a species, we tend to be drawn to negative things, depressing things. I don't know if it's what organized religion has done to us generation after generation or... Well, the brain, it's... yeah, the brain thinks five times more negative thoughts than positive. That's the big research. I'm a big Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden. Uh, sure, Arthur, yes. Bruce Lipton, you know, those people. And it's a scientific fact that the brain thinks five times more negative thoughts than they do positive ones. So you're already on a uphill battle in life as it is, but you do get to choose what you watch, what influences you, who you're around, what, what you take in, what you say, cancel delete. I'm not hearing what that thought. Eat and what you, you have that yes, choice. What you eat. Yes. And how and much you have influence. Your yeah, it changes your whole mind frame. I mean, it's really easy to wake up negative and it's really hard to wake up positive. So what you want, meditation to me is one of the greatest things that you can do. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of meditations and and you start your day out beautiful, then you got it made. You know, you just don't want to start. Off. Do not look at social media. Do not look at the news. You ever notice how you know, it's, it'll put you right Yeah, I mean, seriously, bed. anybody, anybody that's listening or yourself, feel good and they're vibrant they have their coffee they get up and they put on facebook or social media whatever it is and immediately they feel their energy go Ooh. it's look at me competition oh i got a new house i got a new car well i'm not doing that all of a sudden they go Ooh. it's not really very social anymore social media it seems anti-social 
I think it it's be better to go on a nice long walk and hug a dog or something. Yeah, <laughs> start yeah. your day. Because well, people... I think it's become a place for people to spew their unhappiness. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Their and their feelings of inadequacy and um and it's for a lot of people who feel like they don't have anyone else they can tell that to. Yeah, well, that's sad. That it's that that's what. They yeah, feel. but I mean, with that said, I mean, you know, there's so much talk about divide and racism and this. Sure. I have to tell you, us going out on the road, I don't see any of that. I just see a lot of beautiful people and everybody's hugging each other. And it doesn't matter what color, what size, whatever, everybody's literally happy to see each other. And that's all I saw. I didn't see any divide. I didn't see any horrificness. The press, and I, I'm kind of happy about that. The press know? likes to do that too. Is they they yeah. want to make sure that there's always a problem with whatever it is. And I don't have a problem with anybody or anything. we must have hugged over two thousand people and and everyone was so beautiful i mean truly and they all had it was just like it was i loved listening to what you know the what their comments and what they had to say and you know only on social media are they like assholes you know <laughs> you can get away with it like oh i can type something and then keyboard Change warriors, my name. Keyboard Change warriors. My name. you don't know me you know keyboard warrior. big man big man yeah, yeah. I, I hope that we, yeah, I think that's one thing that's beautiful about the paranormal community, the spiritual community, the sci-fi horror community, is there's all different kinds of people there from all different walks of life, and nobody cares what anybody looks like or seems like. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find somebody very, you know, New England conservatively dressed next to someone dressed like a Klingon, and they're hanging out together. Like, it's, it's a very yeah. accepting group of people. Yeah, and, and a very loving group of people, and and I think that that that's wonderful. I mean, I I blame, I blame nerddom. I think we all grew up being like nerdy, and so we're just used to like collecting all the people that that don't belong anywhere else, and including, and that's what you know. Paranormal community conferences and spiritual conferences are so beautiful, and there's just so many nice people there. Yeah, there are. I think that's why, and just doing them as much as the two of you do. That must be just like good feelings all around. It, it is, and and it it it's the only drag is that once you get back, you go like, wow, <laughs> I drain. You know, you not only you drain, but going like, I miss that. I I miss that right. situation. It's really nice to go to those those places and say, and these people that whether they've got these new shows out, like you know, the Twenty Eight Days Haunted or or Jack Osborne, he's with his new show. Such a nice guy. I mean, this what I. I first met Jack just well at Scarefest, and I, I just went up to him. I said, "God, I, I just want to wish your dad the best, you know, and your mom, because I know all you guys are not well, you know." And I just wanted to do it. And he said, "Oh my!" He goes, "Thank you. That means so much to me." It wasn't yeah. like, "Hey, can I have this autograph? Can you do this for me or whatever?" Sure. It was like, "I just want to wish you guys the best." Yeah, Health, it, it was know? just so nice to go to those things and see those people that on those TV shows where all the fans that say, you know, I got into the paranormal because I watched one of your shows. Nice. And I, I, yeah. immediately I go, well, oh, I guess I'm starting to feel like Led Zeppelin or Aerosmith. <laughs> and you know? But I'm saying, putting that aside with the, the, the bottom line is with the new streaming deal where you can see all our shows now on Prime and Video and Apple TV and Tubi is it's opened up a whole new market for us and um and they're seeing that stuff and like you your kind intro you had opened up with how deep the stuff is that we do whether it's children of the grave which was about the orphan trains and how people are deeply moved by the afterlife not just sure it has the, the scary stuff in it but like i said earlier you know what's really we scary need to end is things be, with light. What's the most scariest thing is to be in caught in limbo, and it was something they don't teach people. Like when you, everybody's going to eventually die, so you really need to have everything together. Your suitcase needs to be 
closed and packed and it's over so you don't have anything to do when it comes to that time to pass so you are not in limbo like oh did i leave the oven on did i do this did i make a will how am i going to take care of my kids this it is now i'm in limbo now that's you yeah know? that's my you total want to be in limbo. that's my total feel i was we asked this too is what a, a ghost is and you know well god that's a big question but the arizona in world war ii the Japanese bombed that where they were looking at pictures of their wife and new sister's music playing all this and all of a sudden before they even had a time to think about it the right life was taken so now they're like where am I what's happening mm -hmm. that's that communication of being that taken so fast you didn't make peace with your life you didn't make your mark with your life you didn't say what you needed to say and you, you just stuck and I, 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 I find that is a, a good example of limbo. And you can have that limbo living as well as being. Your that. fullest potential was not delivered. That's what it is when you're born. You have this fullest potential. So it's important to focus on that. If you don't finish it, then you will be somewhat stuck. I agree. You, you two are so wonderful. Uh, where can people find all your stuff? Let's do this again. And what's new? For you well um so I'm here. well you can uh <laughs> find it find it on probably you can see it up here. well it's spooktv.com but you can find it all over amazon prime video on tubi on apple tv on uh we have a large youtube channel that Spook tv youtube pushing stuff um just everywhere we're really pretty much everywhere and we're working on a brand new film that we just won best film uh feature at scarefest we won won the best film and uh that won't be out for a while because it's at the american film market it's so called never blink it's uh in the sales oh, yeah. agents now so but it's called never blink and that's a horror movie that's coming out next year sometime you can always type in the booth brothers movies don't put in the booth brothers you'll get a gospel church <laughs> If people know that school singer, yeah, they're they're a very famous gospel, the Booth Brothers. But you put the Booth Brothers films and movies. I always get a kick out of that because they say is that you, and I'm going, well, look at those guys. If that looked like oh, us, oh it's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> but you'll see all that so, stuff over there. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you to uh, uh, Philip Adrian Booth and and Christopher Saint Booth and KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. We're here every Friday at three o'clock Pacific time. It's the Sheena Metal Experience. If you want to know more about me or my guests, I'm at SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. That's SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. And everywhere on social media, that's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and X, formerly Twitter, at Sheena Metal. And I'm really accessible. You can always just send me a text message and say hi, 818-437-0886. Zero eight eight six. Until I see you next time, seek peace, live in love, lead with kindness, embrace unity, always work to raise your vibration, and most importantly, know that you are love, and you are loved, and you're so loved by me. I'm Sheena Metal. This is the Sheena Metal Experience, and you know what? I'll see you next week. Stay spooky.